Believe it or not, it's more expensive to own Toronto real estate today than it was back in early 2022 at the peak of the market. You might be thinking, well, that doesn't make any sense at all. Prices have dropped significantly since the peak in early 2022. How could it be more expensive today? Well, I'm going to show you how it's true by sharing some data and running through the numbers. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about real estate news across Canada with an emphasis on the city of Toronto. My name is McCallum and I am the leader of a real estate team here in the city of Toronto and we specialize in residential resale, pre-construction and leasing. If you find this video informative or you learned anything, all I ask is that you hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. These actions really help push this video to others like yourself looking to learn more about the Canadian and Toronto real estate markets. And if you'd like to book a buyer consultation, a listing consultation, or just a general call to chat about the market, there's a link in the description of this video where you can book a meeting directly into my calendar. All right, back to the real estate content that you're actually here to see. When I say Toronto real estate has become more expensive now, I'm really only referring to buyers who are obtaining mortgages. Because a buyer who is paying all cash is not really concerned with the current interest rates impacting their actual purchase. They're just buying at a discount compared to early 2022 and 2021. When purchasing a home, buyers, of course, care about the total purchase price, but that's not the number one priority. And yes, you heard that correctly. The purchase price is not the number one priority. It does, however, impact the number one priority, which is monthly carrying costs. I can guarantee that almost all home buyers find an online mortgage calculator and plug in a purchase price, a mortgage rate, and an amortization period to see how much said house would cost them each and every month. Now, I think you see where I'm going with this. Homeowners are, for lack of a better term, less concerned about the actual purchase price that they pay for the home and more concerned about how much they are going to be paying on a monthly basis to own the property. Property values have decreased since early 2022, but the cost to hold a home on a monthly basis has increased. And since I don't like to just tell you something, I'm going to actually show you the data. In the city of Toronto, March 2022 was the peak of the market, which had an average sale price of $1.218 million, and this price was across all home types and again, just the city of Toronto. So if you were a buyer who purchased at the peak of the market for $1.218 million with 20% down, five-year fixed term at a 2.5% interest with 30-year amortization, you would be paying $3,844 per month towards just the mortgage. Now, this does not include utilities, property taxes, and other household expenses. It's purely mortgage payments. And as an additional note, because this is important, I'm using fixed rates in this example because variable rates float with the overnight lending rate. So now imagine you're house hunting today for the average price Toronto home, which in January was $987,000. you are in luck. That $1.2 million house is now valued at nine hundred and eighty-seven. dollars And no, that's not exactly how it works, but for the sake of this example, let's go with it. If you purchased in January for $987,000 with 20% down, a five-year fixed term at a generous 5% interest rate, a 30-year amortization, you would be paying $4,214 per month towards your mortgage. As backwards as it sounds, buying at a lower price today is actually costing people $370 more per month than if they had bought at the peak of the market. And keep in mind, that's using average price and a five-year fixed mortgage. This is exactly why we're seeing 50% fewer sales, because it's more expensive to buy and hold a home today. So the really valid question from buyers I'm receiving is, does it even make sense to purchase a home today if it costs more? And to level set my answer, I am not a real estate agent who says it's always the best time to purchase a home because it's just not. It's only the best time to purchase a home when you are personally and financially ready. With that said though, it may be a good time for you to purchase if you are personally and of course financially ready right now. 
And the reason I say that is because the cost of entry into the market for a first time buyer or the cost you purchase is actually lower. Sure, you are likely paying more on a monthly basis. However, the down payment requirement, land transfer taxes, and other closing costs are lower than they were before. Let me show you what I mean with the same example as before. You purchased the average priced home in Toronto for $1.218 million at the peak with 20% down. So the total cash required to close on that property is roughly $288,000. On the flip side, you purchased the average priced home in Toronto for $987,000 with 20% down. So the total cash required to close on that home is roughly $233,000. But two very important notes about these examples is one, I did not include the $8,475 first time buyer rebate on land transfer taxes. And two, in the second scenario where you purchase for less, the average price is under a million dollars now. So technically you could purchase with minimum down for a total cash requirement of roughly 112,000 if you are a first time buyer, which is very important to note. If we take 288,000 minus 233,000, we get $55,000. So if you were to purchase the average priced home in Toronto, you would be saving $55,000 on the initial purchase compared to the peak of the market. So there you have it. The cost to actually purchase a property is lower. However, it is more expensive to own the home. If you've been considering purchasing a home and want to learn more about what's happening in a specific neighborhood, because this video was focused on Toronto averages, book a call with me using the link in the description below. And if you'd like to learn more about power of sale homes, click the video here for a full breakdown of the pros, the cons, and if you should purchase this type of property.